Hi, I'm Rev. Wendy Craig Purcell here at the Unity Center in San Diego. Thank you so much for watching today. If you'd like to support the work that we do here, please consider making a contribution. Go to our website. It's easy to do. Thank you in advance for that contribution. This week, Rev. Wendy continues her series, Deepening in Our Practice. Today's talk looks at the depth and meaning of the idea of fulfillment. Rev. Wendy looks at the idea that fulfillment is the result of knowing your purpose and answering your calling. Rev. Wendy also invites us not to settle for just being happy and to instead go for fulfillment. Fulfillment. I like the word fulfillment. Do you like the word fulfillment? I like the word fulfillment a lot more than the word happiness. I was thinking about that the other day that, you know, we, we, people talk about wanting to be happy. I want to be happier. You know what? I think there's something much more beautiful and special than being happy, and that's feeling fulfilled, feeling fulfilled. So I want to challenge you today to not settle for happiness, but to go for fulfillment. Now, what is fulfillment? What is fulfillment, and how do we get fulfillment. Well, first of all, you and I are here by divine appointment. Did you know that? That was kind of only a so-so know that. Well, you are here by divine appointment, and I don't mean just necessarily sitting in this room right now, but you are here in physical form in this incarnation at this moment in time by divine appointment. In some mysterious, mystical, magical way, your soul has an appointment with destiny at this period in our planet's evolution and in humanity's evolution. And you are needed very much so to live out your calling and to live out your purpose, not only individually for yourself, but for what happens when more and more of us do that individually and we do it collectively. We begin to birth a whole new humanity and a whole new world in which to live. Fulfillment is a result of two things. Fulfillment is a result of knowing your purpose and answering your call. Fulfillment is a result of knowing your purpose and answering your call. Say that with me together. Fulfillment is the result of knowing your purpose and answering your call. Those two are not exactly the same. Your purpose is your why. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? Your calling is your what or your how. Your calling has to do with living out your purpose, living out your why. How many of you feel that you know your why, you know your purpose. Raise your hand high if you, if you know it. Some of you will know it and some of you don't. My encouragement and invitation to those of you who didn't raise your hand is to love yourself enough, to love yourself enough to spend some time to make sure you find out your why, your purpose. Sometimes the reason we don't know what it is is we just haven't gotten quiet enough to pay attention and to listen for it. Sometimes we don't know what it is because we think it's gotta be something like really, excuse me, really special, really unique, really different, like nobody else in the world can have that same <clears throat> purpose or that same why. Your purpose, your why, is going to drive your soul your purpose, your why, when you know what it is, will eventually inform your calling, will inform the what. My purpose, my purpose is, I think, a pretty common one. My purpose is to make the world a better place. That's small, medium, and large. I'm driven by my why that I bring into every single situation I'm in. Whether it is a conversation, whether it is solving a problem, whether, whether, whether it is giving a talk or creating a program, my why is always about how can I make this better? How can I make this more compassionate? 
How can I make this more fair? That's part of the reason I personally feel so pulled into conversations around healing racism and implicit bias because we are living in times that are very, very unjust and deeply troubling to at least my soul. So whatever I'm doing, I know that beneath it, my motivation, my why for it is wanting to make it better than it was before I stepped into it, of doing my part. Some people would answer the question, their why, it may be about healing. Their why may be about leading. Their why may be about bringing joy. Their why may be about um, creativity. Those are not my whys. Knowing your why is fundamental to fulfillment in your life. If you don't know your why, you will never, ever, 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 ever feel completely fulfilled and satisfied. Your purpose, your why, actually won't be a surprise to you at all. When you sit down and you really think about it or you really meditate on it and it comes to you, your why, your purpose, it's not gonna surprise you. And maybe that's the reason some of us think we don't know what it is, because we think it should be something so grand, so grand. But it's usually very fundamental, and it's usually very, very, very basic. Our calling is how we live that out, and our calling, our calling, the what, might surprise the heck out of us. Might surprise the heck out of us. We may be really clear why we are here, what our purpose is, but totally surprised and shocked at the form that that calling can take. Does that make sense? Because the calling or the form can take so many different expressions and it can change over time. I know that my calling, my calling is to teach everyday spiritual wisdom for conscious living and global transformation. And I do that through the spoken word. That shot the living daylights out of me when I realized that that was how I was going to fulfill my purpose. You mean stand in front of people and talk? That sounds really scary. Be a minister, that sounds awful. I even had my husband, oh, he's not in the room, good. I even had my husband, when I told him that I was going to go off and go into seminary to become a minister, look at me as if I had just ended my entire life. You like that? Oh, you are in the room. Oh, well, usually you're up there. <laughs> Our calling is magnetic. And so is our purpose. It's going to pull at us. And it usually starts in a kind of nagging sort of way. Nagging sort of way. What happens in life, in relationships, if somebody nags you and you don't listen? What usually happens, huh? You get mad. OK, that's one response. What else usually happens? They get louder, right? If they're nagging you to be a certain way or do a, do a certain something, and you don't, and you're not paying any attention, you're not listening, you're not letting them, you're not hearing them, their volume usually goes up and gets louder and louder. I think our, our why and our calling get louder and louder to the extent that in direct um, relationship to us ignoring them. What I absolutely know is those people who feel most fulfilled in life, those people who have the greatest energy, those people that you and I are actually attracted to energetically and consciousness-wise, we wanna be around them, are people who are fulfilled. They are people who know why they are here and who are doing something about it, have answered their call. For some of us, to get there, it means quieting down all those chattering voices outside of us and sometimes the chattering voices inside of us. To listen softly enough that we can hear what our soul is trying to tell us. 
Louise Hay, remember Louise Hay? Yeah, I miss her. Louise Hay said, our longing is our calling. Our longing is our calling. I think it's the longing of our soul is our calling. We, we, we need to let our soul guide us. Can you imagine the kind of relationships we would create, the kind of friendships we would create, the kind of marriages or holy unions we would create, the kind of businesses we would create, the kind of country we could create, if individually we were guided by our soul? Would you like to live in that world? I would like to live in that world. I would like to live in that world. I would like to inspire others to, to live in that world by getting so clear that when asked, why are you here? You can say it in a sentence. You know why you here, why you are here. And when asked, and what are you doing about it? How does that show up? Where are you doing that? That you can answer it in an instant. But it requires sometimes a little bit of inner work, quieting those chattering voices, and being willing to be surprised by the answer being willing to be surprised by the answer, because it might surprise you. How many of you know the author Sue, Sue Monk Kidd? Sue Monk Kidd, she's a, a pretty popular author. She wasn't always a popular author. She was on, I believe, either a retreat or vacation on the island of Crete. She was visiting a monastery, and while there at this monastery, she learned from the nuns she wasn't a writer yet. She had learned from the nuns that there was this beautiful old tree in the middle of the garden of the monastery. And that if you were to go to that tree and just give that tree a, a hug and ask that tree about your soul's longing, you would get some sort of guidance. And so she decided that she would go ahead and do that. And she, she writes about this, that she went up to the tree and she embraced the tree and she asked from the deepest place of her, what is she here to do? And she found herself blurting out, I want to be a novelist. And she writes that that surprised her. She had not ever actually really thought about it. I want to be a novelist. But as soon as she let that live in her, as soon as she honored it by allowing it to reside in her consciousness for a while, she began to make some changes that eventually supported her purpose and her calling. Sometimes we are so quick to dismiss that which we get in that quiet place of meditation. We think, oh no, that's not me. Oh no, I can't do that. Oh no, that's not needed. Or, oh no, I don't know how to do that. And in a way, it's almost like we're blaspheming the divine guidance that spirit through our soul is trying to give us. But instead, what if we just took the attitude or the approach when we ask and we get, I'm to be a novelist, or I'm to be a this, or I'm to do that, or this is my purpose, this is my calling. What if instead of so quickly arguing with it or editing it, we just held it? We honored it with our attention and our love and respect, and then considered what it might mean, and considered, is there a step I could take in that direction? When we do these kinds of things, when we are clear on our purpose, and when we respond to our calling, we will feel an energy, a vibrancy, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of completeness, a sense of wholeness that we can't get any other way. The happiest people in our world, I believe, are people who know their why and who know their what. And do you know what's kind of exciting right now? We are seeing, at least in this country, a whole generation of millennials that are getting this in a way that maybe many of us as baby boomers never quite got. I have a real affinity for our millennials. And I do not just because I have two beautiful millennials myself, and not just because I see our community drawing more millennials into us, but because I look at the world that they're living in, which in so many ways is so different 
than the world that you and I lived in at their same age. And I believe we have a responsibility to help and mentor and nurture and support our millennial in a way that resonates with who they are and what they want to stand for. I read an article yesterday as I was doing a little more research for today's message. And I found the article online in Forbes magazine. It was written in 2016 by May May Fox. It's called Six Ways to Discover Your Life Purpose for Millennials. And I was intrigued by it because of life purpose and intrigued by it because of the focus being millennials. And I just want to share a couple of the statistics that she points to. She says millennials are driven more by purpose than money. Driven more by purpose than money. Does that encourage you? That encourages me deeply. I really believe that people who are driven by purpose are the people who are gonna make a positive difference in this world across all of the sectors where difference needs to be made. Whether we're talking politically, educationally, environmentally, governmentally, that those who are driven by purpose more than money are the ones that are gonna make a difference. And if you're really good at being driven by purpose and really good at your calling, you can probably make a decent amount of money as well. But those who are driven by money as a single bottom line are seldom the ones that are going to be bringing about the transformation that I think we long for. Do we not? Do we not long for a world that is more loving, that is safe, that is more fair, that is more just, that is more inclusive, that is more peaceful? I believe we really do. What she also pointed to was 94% of millennials want to use their skills to benefit a cause. Wow, can you imagine unleashing the energy of 94% of millennials toward a cause? Holy cow, watch out. We've got to make sure we don't discourage that. We've got to encourage that. And then she points to another statistic that half value a career aligned with their values enough to take a pay cut. Give a hand to our millennials. It's talking about a shift from self to service. It's talking about a shift into a broader degree of caring. And so I want to circle back as I get ready to close this and say how very important it is for us, for our individual health and well-being, we all deserve, we truly all deserve to have a life in which we feel fulfilled. And that's going to look different for each of us. And that's a good thing. What fulfills me or how I'm fulfilled shouldn't be exactly the same way that it is for you. I need you to be the fullest and best you and to allow your personality to be in service to what your soul is calling you to do. I should not try to make you like me, nor should you try to make me like you. But we deserve to feel fulfilled, and there's a path to achieving that. And that path is getting really clear on your purpose. Why are you here? What do you always attempt to bring into any situation you find yourself? Jimmer sang a song and outlined quite a number of different pop possible purposes. Called to be a healer, called call to create. Those are all potential answers to the question why you are here. And then to really stay with what is that gonna look like for you? You may already be there. And you know what? You may already be in a place that is absolutely your perfect what and your perfect how, but it may not feel that way because you haven't connected the dots yet as to how that's an expression of your why. Does that make sense? As soon as you get clear on your why, everything else is going to start to fall into place. So I hope that the next time I ask you a question or anybody asks you a question, do you know why you are here? That you can say, absolutely I do. And I can tell you it in a sentence. In a sentence. I don't need to go on and on. I can tell it to you in a sentence. And I can share with you and show you what I am doing about it. Knowing your purpose 
and finding your calling is how you live a life of fulfillment. Namaste. The Unity Center, spiritually progressive, socially responsive, radically inclusive. We have services on Sundays at 9 and 11. Many people enjoy Reverend Wendy's talks and meditations and aren't able to attend the Unity Center in person. If you're part of our extended family from around the world and would like to help support the Unity Center, please go to our website or download our free app, which offers even more ways to connect with the Unity Center. Namaste.